Welcome to the session. We are having a quick look at the mic burner, please. How bad are bananas? So sneak peek at mic burner, please. How bad are bananas? The book is looking at the carbon footprint on everything. The book is a guide for you to start an environmentally friendly, conscious life. It will be a reminder that how our everyday activities contribute to the current climate crisis and add efficiency to reduce wastes. So, we hear about melting of polar ice or the global warming or the ozone layer depletion or the floods or the endangered species and animals getting extinct and more of the hurricanes, more of the extreme weather, the global warming and the climate conditions. All these are nothing but effects of human activities on the climate which we, which we know, which we act as if we don't know or which we think is too small to catch our attention. We need to push ourselves to action and do our own part to reduce the harmful effects of our lifestyle. We need to push ourselves from ruining our planet. Because, because of the potable water and breathable air, life is possible on Earth and it is not possible on any other planet. Our daily life habits, shopping, cooking, washing, leave their impact. How much food you throw away during a course of a year? How many appliances you leave unturned? How much water you spend or drain? All this has an impact on the global warming. What's a carbon footprint? Carbon footprint takes into consideration many harmful gases. Global warming or climate change refers to the amount of carbon dioxide and a lot many greenhouse gases, not just carbon dioxide, a lot many greenhouse gases that adds or are released during certain inefficient processes, either by individuals or by institutions or by the industry. Methane, for example, is 25 times harmful as carbon dioxide. Nitrous oxide is 300 times worse. So, if this is 25 times or 300 times worse, the refrigerant gases are possibly 100 times more harmful than carbon dioxide. But we normally look at carbon dioxide as a pollutant. In the United Kingdom alone, maybe 10 years ago, 86% of the greenhouse output was in the form of carbon dioxide, while methane was only 7% and refrigerant gases 1%. But this is changing because of the global warming. Everybody is getting more air conditioning and refrigeration gadgets at home and offices. And so you will have more refrigerants impacting the climate. The average size of carbon footprint varies from country to country, but it tends to be bigger in the developed world and lesser in third countries. For example, in Malawi, 0.1 metric ton of carbon dioxide emission is done by the people. The whole country has a carbon footprint average. But per capita average in United Kingdom with respect to the carbon dioxide emissions is 15 metric ton compared to 0.1 metric ton. If you think United Kingdom is worse, no. North America comes to around 28 metric ton, Australia comes to around 30 metric ton. So as a planet, the global average is around in these ranges. And we produced 49 billion metric tons in 2007. So 10 years down the line, we are now not at just double, but more than that, because the pollutants increase geometric progression. Also, Lee proposes a 10 tons lifestyle, because now we are producing on an average per capita 15 tons. He is suggesting let us reduce by one third and make it a 10 ton carbon footprint per person. Let us bring down the carbon footprint of each person. This is by making small changes in our lifestyle. One of the changes that we can make is the text messages and emails because they have no impact. Ten years ago, 25% of the text message was from China. Today, all the third world countries, including India, have a lot of text messages. What is good or bad about it? Over the past few decades, because of the latest information, communication, technology revolution, the computers and phones and mobile devices are changing the way we work. So texting someone instead of making a phone call makes a better impact with respect to carbon footprint. How? because it takes less energy. In what terms? To be precise, a single text message takes 014 grams of carbon footprint. 014 grams. 0 0.014. 0 0.014 compared to what it will take for a phone call. We will see it later. Now, suppose we take an example of 2 to 3 trillion texts that were sent in a year on an average. It will be 32,000 metric tons. Human beings created 40 billion metric tons of carbon footprint and text alone is only 32,000 metric tons. Now let us compare this text to the emails and phone calls. A daily 2 minute phone call adds up to 47 kilogram of carbon emission or carbon footprint per year. 2 minute phone call is 47 kilograms while an email is 014 per email. So this is the difference. 125 million metric tons a year is the overall phone call 
based carbon footprint globally. Why? This is because of the switchboards and the exchanges that work and the energy required to make this communication network up and running. As with the text message, email is also not bad, email is also good. But what goes wrong with the email is if all the people understand email is better than talking and everybody sends because of the rebound effect, lot many emails will be there and because of the increase in volume, the footprint will go up. Having said that, emails account only 4 grams of carbon footprint, but a year's worth of emailing can add to 1% of your 10 ton lifestyle. It is still better. If you send all the emails possible over a year, you will have only 1% of your 10 ton target consumed by these emails. Let us look at computers. To make a computer, we need only 720 grams of carbon footprint. The damage is only 720 grams. And when you use a computer, it is only around 70 grams. So, 10, <coughs> 720 gra kilograms to make a computer and is around 70 grams when computer is used per hour. But who is the best culprit? The topmost culprit is a data center that is fueling the information age. Because we live in, without internet, we cannot do. It is an internet of things. And the internet works because there is a data center everywhere. The data is maintained in the world wide web by data bank or the memory banks or the servers and databases. These run 24-7 globally with the so many backups. They consume electricity and they are the culprits in carbon footprint. Keeping these servers running requires around 250 million metric tons of carbon. Some ways plastic is better than paper. Is it really so? No. Plastic debris can linger longer in the environment. They harm the animals and plants. But plastic is marginally better since they don't rot and create methane emissions. Paper, because it's a byproduct, rots and creates methane emissions. Plastic is not biodegradable so it does not create an emission. But it harms the plants and animals. One disposable plastic bag from a supermarket is 10 grams of carbon footprint. One plastic bag is 10 grams of carbon footprint. One paper bag is 12 grams of carbon footprint. So it is just 2 grams, but when you add up over the year, it comes to a lot. So one plastic bag is 10 grams of carbon footprint. One paper bag is 12 grams of carbon footprint. So we have to recycle the paper bags and we have to do our shopping on rot tote bags. If you don't recycle the letters and catalogs that you receive, whenever you go to a shopping mall, you bring their pamphlet or you bring their publications. Each letter that you get in your mail, the advertisement that you get is 200 grams of carbon footprint. Each letter, that is a paper that comes and the envelope that comes to you, to overall has 200 grams of carbon footprint. Not only paper, not only the printing press and the paper making machinery, the sorting and transportation of this mail, junk mail, also costs a lot of carbon footprint. So recycle the paper products, stop the junk mail and keep the paper away from getting into the landfill because they create methane when they are off. Manufacturing of new paper takes twice energy of recycling. So go for as much as recycling of the paper and recycling of the paper before they are recycled paper created or manufactured. Paper bag books will add 1 kilogram of carbon footprint. 1 kilogram of carbon footprint is a big number. But then in fact reading will keep you away from carbon intensive activity like driving or shopping. So better go for reading. So better go for reading. Stop watching this video and go starting the book. Mike, burner, leaves, bananas, how they are harmful or how they are useful. Different ways of traveling have different carbon footprints. Flying is the worst. To produce 1 liter of gasoline or petrol, we need 3 kilograms of carbon footprint. To produce 1 liter of gasoline or petrol, we consume 3 kilograms of carbon footprint. In one year, United Kingdom uses 50 billion liters of gasoline. So 50 billion liters into 3 kilograms of carbon footprint is what goes in for making of the gasoline. Cycling also leaves a footprint because you cannot pedal the cycle without you having some energy. For that you need to eat. Suppose you eat cereal and milk, your footprint is 90 grams. But if you eat a cheeseburger, it is 250 grams. So if you eat cereal and milk, it is 90 grams. If you eat a cheeseburger, it is 260 grams. So if you cycle a mile eating cereals, you are creating a footprint of 90 grams. If you cycle after eating a cheeseburger per mile, you are creating a carbon footprint of 200 or 300 grams of carbon footprint. If you are riding on an electric powered train, your footprint will vary depending on how many passengers are in. When you, when you are traveling on a public transport on a peak hour, it will be around 150 grams of carbon footprint. But if you are traveling at a time when there is no crowd, it is around 300 grams of carbon footprint. So prefer public traffic, transport and prefer peak hours. 
average fuel efficiency in United Kingdom in a car is 33 miles per gallon. Fuel efficiency is 33 miles per gallon. So, it will be 700 grams of carbon footprint per mile. It will be 700 grams of carbon footprint per mile. But if the car is less efficient, if you are going in a high fi car or a sports car or a luxury car, it will not be 700 grams, it will be 3 times that, it will be 2100 grams of carbon footprint. Higher or costly cars or less fuel efficient cars will have 2000 to 3000 grams of carbon footprint. So depending upon how long you drive in a day and how many days in a year you drive, it will add up to almost 10% of your target of 10 ton lifestyle. Your carbon footprint being brought down to 10 ton, your car travel alone will take 10%. Your emails will take 1%. So, aviation. Aviation causes 2% of the global emission. If you could travel from London to Glasgow, Scotland and back, the distance will be 800 miles. For that distance, if you go by cycle and if you take a diet banana, it will be 43 kilograms of footprint. If you go by train, it will be 120 kilograms of footprint. Double that. If you go by a small fuel efficient car, it will be 330 kilograms of footprint. While if you fly, it will be 500 kilograms of footprint. So cycling is 50 kilograms and flight is 500 kilograms. This is 10 times more. That is how the carbon footprint of air travel versus cycling works. <coughs> if you take a round trip landed to Hong Kong, it will have 4 metric ton. It will have a 4 metric ton. Here we are looking at 500 kilograms of carbon footprint and a 4 metric ton. Why is it so? Because 4 metric ton, 10 metric ton is your target and your one flight will take away half the carbon footprint that you can ever do in a year based on the proposal that we are working on. Why is it so? Because flying high leaves a large carbon footprint because the emissions at higher altitude has higher impact. Eat local produce, meat from non ruminant animals. Why? Because local produce will not have any transportation, refrigeration, cold chain and things like that. So, there will be no inventory or no warehouse and so lesser carbon footprint. If you eat your own, if you grow your own fruits and veggies, there is no footprint. If you are eating locally grown, then maybe 10 grams of carbon footprint. If your apple is brought from to the supermarket, then it will be 80 grams of footprint. And if it is bananas, it will be again 80 grams. But one apple or one banana will be 80 grams. But when you bring it in large numbers, it will be 480 grams for a banana and 550 grams for an apple because of the way in which it is packed. The packing also eats away in the form of higher footprint. Bananas have smaller footprint because they don't use artificial light to grow and their skin provides enough protection. You don't have to light them to ripe. Bananas need not be lighted to be ripe. They don't require extra packaging or air fighting. That is a plus point about banana. That is why you should be having more bananas compared to apple or oranges. What is wrong with oranges? Oranges have a bigger footprint. Per orange will be 80-90 grams, but when it is air freighted, the footprint is 1 kilogram per kilo of orange. The carbon footprint of oranges is more than apples and more than banana. As for vegetables, average kilo of carrot is only 300, but potatoes is 370 grams of carbon footprint. The footprint grows if the food is not cooked efficiently or the heat is wasted. How far the vegetables have traveled to reach the supermarket and then to your plate means a lot. 250 gram of local asparagus leaves a footprint of 125 grams of carbon footprint. 250 grams of local asparagus leaves almost half of that, 125 grams of carbon footprint. While if it is airlifted, it is 3 kilograms. 250 grams of asparagus leaves 3 kilograms of carbon footprint. An uncooked beef steak has a footprint of 2 kilograms. Why it is 2 kilograms? Why it is 1 ounce of beef steak having 3 kilograms of uh, Carbon footprint because the cattle, the cattle farm creates this footprint and cows are ruminants, cows chew the curd which release methane in the process and methane is uh, one of the greenhouse gases that creates more carbon footprint. Sheep also ruminants, so a kilo of sheep or a cow meat will have a higher footprint than compared to a kilo of a pork. Why? Pig is not a ruminant, pig does not chew the cow and pig does not release methanes in the process. Your favorite beverages may have a higher carbon footprint. If you drink a pint of tap water, it is 0.14 grams of carbon footprint, while a bottled water, it is more. It is 500 milliliter of bottled water creates 1000 times, that is 160 grams. 0.14 grams of tap water versus 160 grams of bottled water because of the energy spent in processing, packing and transportation. 
so it's not only water it's a coffee one coffee a day adds to one percent of your 10 ton lifestyle just like email one coffee a day ends up in one percent of your 10 ton lifestyle a black cup of coffee or a plain cup of tea will account for 21 grams but when you add milk it will go up to 200 grams from 21 milk will take it to 200 grams just like water a pint of water in, in bottled water goes up so if it is bottled water like uh, like uh, for uh, local vegetables when it is transported it goes up bottled water because of packing and uh, transporting it goes up to 160 grams from 1.14 grams likewise in a coffee or tea when you add milk from 21 grams it goes up to 200 or 300 grams so that is what it is when it is a latte it is still more from 200 it goes to 300 cappuccino and latte the energy footprint is different the imported bottle of beer it's on 900 grams because of the footprint and transportation if it is avoided it will be 300 so local beer is 300 while imported beer is 900 if you look at wine it is 1000 grams of footprint wine but if it is a boxed wine, it will be reduced to 400. Why? Because we avoid using glass bottle. So you should be asking, did I turn off the oven? Did I leave the iron on? Is there a potential fire hazard? Or am I saving wasting energy? Is that the only thing? No, it is more. Turn the lights off along with other appliances. If you wash your laundry at 30 degrees, it's only 0.6 kilogram. But when you dry it at 60 degrees, it is 3 kilogram. Dryer creates more carbon footprint. Likewise, electric iron, it can be 20 grams or 80 grams, depending upon how fast and how skilled you are ironing your shirt. Dishwashers, dishwashers, when you keep it at 55 degrees centigrade, it kills a lot of bacteria, 400 times better than a normal washing. But the footprint is around 700 grams of carbon footprint. Your dryer accounts for 20% of your footprint. Eat less of meat and dairy. Eat only seasonal foods. Eat local produce. Eliminate food waste. Buy only what you eat. Protect your food in the refrigerator so that nothing is wasted. You can stop buying low yield crops like a baby carrot or a cherry tomato. You <clears throat> know that energy for literally little produce is what you should look at when you are buying vegetables. Refrain from buying food that is unnecessary packing. Who needs bananas to be packed in plastic? So basically, don't blame volcanoes and forest fires for the global warming. Take black carbon, it's a component of the soot that is released by incomplete combustion. 50% only comes from outdoor fires. The rest, 25% is fireplaces that you warm your rooms, 25% is transport emissions that you use in your car, 10% is coal burning stations which produces your electricity. So blame deforestation, blame your activity, don't blame volcanoes as a nature. There is a carbon footprint in virtually everything that you do and it can be reduced by being more aware of the hidden contributors of the greenhouse gas emissions. Be more aware of what you do, how it will have an impact on the climate and then take a difference. The choice is yours. Even if it is simple as driving slower, the choice is yours. So decide whether you will have bananas or you will choose something else. Thanks for watching. A sneak peek at Mike Bernalee's 